Welcome to Drinkosaurus, where we take ancient cocktail recipes into the modern era. My name's Matt. Let us begin drinking. In today's episode, we're going to make a variant on the White Russian. We're going to keep the spirit of the drink, but we're going to bring it to a new part of the world. The White Russian and the Black Russian are drinks that were made sometime around the mid-1960s. The reason that they have Russian in the name is they're comprised mostly of vodka. More specifically, the Black Russian is 2.5 parts of vodka and one part of coffee liqueur, where the right Russian is the same ratios except they add a 1.5 ounce of milk or cream, which gives it the white color. As I mentioned in the intro, we're going to really change this drink up, but before we do, let's understand the ingredients in the foundational part of the drink before we start substituting them. So as the name implies, vodka is a primary ingredient in the drink. Vodka is a very neutral spirit, meaning it doesn't really have much taste, and it's typically distilled from the waters extracted from potatoes or cereal grains. Vodka is a bit of an interesting spirit to use in cocktails, just because it doesn't really bring any character of its own, but rather adds a alcoholic twist to whatever you mix with it. Vodka became very popular in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, where the drinking scene moved away from classic cocktail recipes and moved more towards a lot of mixed drinks that were easy to drink, sweet, and really basically easy to get drunk off of. Because of that, a lot of bars these days have so much vodka because there's such a big market for them, and a lot of the drinks that people are comfortable with are comprised mostly of vodka. However, in the early 2000s when the cocktail craze started coming back, where people kind of ditched what their parents were drinking from the 70s through 90s and started going back to the old classics, that's where you see cocktail bars these days having very few bottles of vodka. The reason that you don't see much vodka in a modern cocktail bar is a lot of cocktails, based on their definition, don't call for vodka. The definition of a cocktail is widely disputed, and maybe we'll do a video in the future talking about the different definitions and where they come from. But for today's video, to distinguish it from a mixed drink, we're going to call a cocktail any sort of alcoholic beverage whose primary ingredient is the alcohol. A mixed drink, however, its primary ingredient are juices, sodas, tonics, stuff like that. So for example, a vodka cranberry would be considered mixed drink because its primary ingredient is cranberry juice. Uh, other examples would be like a rum and coke or all those endless blank teeny variations that you see who usually has vodka as a base and then adds a whole bunch of other non-alcoholic ingredients. So based on this definition, the white Russian would fall under a mixed drink um, if we want to be super specific today. So that's some information about vodka. Let's now talk about the other primary ingredient, which is coffee liqueur, more popularly Kahlua. Kahlua is a mix of rum and coffee flavorings, and it's been the staple of coffee liqueurs for a long time. So anytime you see a cocktail calling for coffee liqueur, they're probably calling for Kahlua. However, um, I have some issues with Kahlua, namely because it is very, very sweet, and it doesn't taste like coffee as much as it tastes more like coffee syrup. So what we're going to do today is, keeping in the coffee liqueur spirit, we're going to change out Kahlua for a local coffee liqueur. So this is Perk. It is made from Saxton's Distillery in Vermont, and it is less sweet and has more of a coffee flavor that you would associate with black coffee or espresso. It's easy to find a coffee liqueur these days, especially in the United States, because a lot of local distilleries, when they're getting started and they need to put out some products, typically put out a coffee liqueur. So they're pretty common. Now that we've talked about the ingredients that comprise a white and black Russian, let's make our variant. As we stated before, we're going to substitute out the coffee liqueur for other coffee liqueur, just to be extra picky. And this is where things get a little bit weird. We're going to be switching out the vodka, which you might be thinking, how is it going to be a white Russian if there's no vodka? I'll get to that in a moment. The reason being is the strong ethanol flavor in vodka, which enhances the alcoholic nature of the other ingredients, can kind of be distracting, and I think it more detracts from the drink rather than adds to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute out vodka for some dark rum. We'll talk about rum in more detail in a future video. The main thing to know about rum is it does have a sweetness to it, but it also has an oaky flavor to it. Since it's dark rum, it's aged in oak barrels, which gives it that characteristic. The one ingredient in a white Russian, which we haven't talked about, is the milk or cream. I am going to substitute that out with something that actually has alcohol in it, 
Typically, you can use Bailey's, which is an Irish cream liqueur, which is really tasty, but also keeps the booze level high in our drink. But what I'm going to do to keep it in the Caribbean style is use rum chata. Rum chata, as the name suggests, is a combination of rum and horchata, which you can think of as like a spiced milk if you've never had it before. This will add more spiciness to our drink, and we could have used spiced rum, but I prefer dark rum, and I don't have any spiced rum. <laughs> that's the reason. That's, the that's just reason. that's just the reason. It's there's no other reason. I just don't have spiced rum. Let's review our substitution so far. Our 2.5 ounces of vodka have become 1.5 ounces of rum. Our one ounce of coffee liqueur, we're gonna bump down to 0.75 ounces of coffee liqueur. And our 1.5 ounces of milk or cream is now going to be a half ounce of rum chata. These ratios have been adjusted for two reasons. The first one is so that it'll fit in our cocktail glass. And the second is because since the ingredients interact a little differently, I've just balanced it out to make sure it's not too sweet and not too spirit forward. To further spice up our drink, we're gonna add two more ingredients, but they're such low quantities that they don't affect our ratio. So one of them is, nope, <laughs> this one, allspice dram, which is super, super potent, but it has uh, a lot of the flavors of allspice, which is typically associated with Caribbean drinks, and also Angostura bitters, which are the staple bitters which come from the same region. So these are all the ingredients that we're going to use to make our white Russian variant, and since it's more Caribbean themed, I call it the Cuban Missile Crisis. All right, so we're ready to start mixing, but I lied, we're gonna be shaking our drink today. And this is the first drink on the channel where we're actually going to be shaking. You might be thinking to yourself, does it matter if you mix it or shake it? Yes, yes it does. Here's why. Shaking a cocktail is super important for emulsifying the different ingredients. So whenever you're working with different liquids of different densities, you wanna shake it to make sure they're all mixed properly. Here's a list of different ingredients that usually warrant a good shake. Any citrus juices, such as lemon, lime, or orange, you need to shake it. Any sort of syrups like honey or grenadine, you're gonna to wanna to shake it. Anything like egg white, you're gonna to wanna to shake it and any creams or milks, you're gonna to wanna to shake those too. The reason you don't shake every drink is because when you shake it, it does agitate the liquid and makes air bubbles in it, which usually isn't the most appealing thing if you're dealing with just spirits. It also sometimes puts little ice chips in your drink and you wanna avoid those at all costs, but emulsifying is much more important than a few ice chips. And I'm gonna show you a technique to get any ice chips out of your drink. Typically when you're shaking a drink, you put all your ingredients into your shaker. Since that is not transparent, I'll put all my ingredients here and then dump it into the shaker after. You wouldn't do that, I'm just doing it for the sake of the show. We're going to start with our 1.5 ounces of rum. Oh, I might have just enough. Yum. <laughs> Next, we're gonna add our three quarter ounces of our coffee liqueur. That's a little more than 3.5 ounces, but we're going with it. I am a messy pourer today. Uh -oh. Hopefully it's not that rum I just drank. Oh, we actually need that for aesthetic reasons. There we go. Next, we're going to add our half ounce of rum chata. This will give it some creaminess to it. As you can see, it's kind of milky. In texture. In terms of allspice dram, we want to use less than a half ounce. Um, I said a couple bar spoons. What I'm going to do, this is a half ounce pour. I'm going to kind of fill this halfway to kind of go for maybe a quarter ounce or so. Just about that much. Just enough to spice it up. Finally, we're going to add a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. I'm going to do one and a half. And I don't want to spice it up too much. We want to keep it kind of balance between spicy and sweet. We're almost ready to start shaking our drink. However, since we only used a half ounce of our rum chata, our drink doesn't really have that creamy texture that we would expect from a white Russian. So what we're gonna do is a special little trick to make our drink creamier and richer without adding any extra flavors to it. And in order to do that, we're going to put in egg, 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 egg. egg. I know, 
Sounds gross, right? But egg white is a really nifty trick that you can use in cocktails. It doesn't add any flavor, but it adds a textural element to it. And don't worry, it's super safe. Um, I've mixed with egg whites plenty of times and have not gotten food poisoning. The alcohol in the drink usually will kill any bacteria. And usually, fun fact, salmonella is found on the outside of the egg, not the inside of the egg. So you'll be just fine. Here's where we hope that I can separate this correctly, otherwise I'll look pretty dumb. But what you wanna do is just separate out your egg white from your egg. You can do this kind of like back and forth motion until you get that egg white out of there. And then you can use your yolk for whatever you use yolks for. The grossest part about this is pouring the egg white into the drink. Let's see if we can get some sound on this. Sound enhancement. Gross. Now all our ingredients are together. Now we wanna put it into our shaker. But we're gonna learn about a couple techniques about shaking to make sure our drink comes out exactly how we want it. Bye bye You can watch from in here. Now we're ready to start shaking. And what we're going to do is typically you would fill your shaker with ice. What we're gonna do is do a dry shake first. The reason is, is we need to shake this a lot to mix all those creamy and egg whitey ingredients together. And we don't wanna dilute the drink while we do that. So we're gonna do a dry shake first, and then we're gonna do a wet shake to actually chill the drink. Just a note, this shaker that I'm using has a built-in strainer. Typically you would see a Boston shaker in a bar. The reason I'm not using a Boston shaker is because we need to vent this drink as we dry shake it, because the egg white creates a lot of carbon dioxide, which will constantly break the seal on the Boston shaker. And the Boston shaker is mostly held together with that seal. So basically it'll just make a mess if it ends up popping out. Here we go. Gonna add our slurry in there, which is not mixed together at all and kind of looks gross, but we're gonna mix it and it's gonna look fantastic. So we're gonna start the dry shake and I'm gonna vent this periodically just so the pressure doesn't build up and this doesn't explode, which has happened before. Don't do that. Here we go. Shake, 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 shake your body liner. Ooh, <laughs> that just popped right off. The more you shake it, the better it comes out. So that should have been enough dry shake. What we're gonna do is add in our ice and do the, I guess the wet shake. Uh, you typically don't need to shake a cocktail for too long. The kind of metal encasement chills it really quickly. And just be careful, because if you shake it for too long, you're gonna have a lot of ice chips in your drink and it's gonna water it down quite a bit. Caution, loud. Probably wasn't that loud. Here we go. And that should do it. So we have our cocktail glass, and what we're gonna do is since this has a built-in strainer, I'm going to just take off the top part. Typically, you would use a Hawthorne strainer, which is designed to catch all the little ice chips. Like I said before, I'm gonna give you a technique for filtering those ice chips and pouring it through a fine strainer will catch all those little bits of ice. Here we go. And all of our ingredients are nicely mixed together and that egg white gives it a nice creamy and frothy sort of character. And, oh sh ah, my strainer! <laughs> and we have our Cuban Missile Crisis. Let's give it a taste. Ooh, it's full. Let's try taking a sip again. So right away you're hit with a whole bunch of different spices. You have the spice from the allspice dram, which has a cinnamony nutmeg sort of flavor, which blends really well with the horchata flavoring from the rum chata. The rum gives it a nice spirit base to support that rather than the vodka, which would maybe conflict with it a bit. And then underlying that all is the richness of the coffee liqueur. This is a great drink for the winter time because it has a nice warming characteristic from the spices. It's also a good drink to give it to folks who prefer a sweeter drink. Um, but want to try something a little bit different. I just want to drink more of it because it's really good. Mm -hmm. 
It's really it's good. <laughs> what I can find it most comparing to is chai tea or any chai ingredients. It has a lot of the same flavor profile, but the egg white adds a thickness to it. So it still tastes nice and creamy, like a chai latte. That's what it would be. That's what I was thinking of. Maybe I should have called it something related to chai and not missiles, but you know, we're there. This drink is an example of how you can take a more sweeter mixed drink and still kind of keep it in the cocktail fashion by having the focus be on spirits. Drinkosaurus is a production of Little Giant Monsters. I forgot all the stuff, stuff that I'm supposed to say for this piece. What do I say again? Drinkosaurus is a production of Little Giant Monsters. If you have any questions or anything you would like to see on the videos, please leave a comment below uh, and I'll try to make a video focused around those comments. We also have social media, so make sure to check us out there. And we have a Patreon as well. That's all for today's episode. So remember, keep mixing and drink responsibly. And don't spill. I always spill. I'm gonna drink more. Drink the whole thing. No, I'm not. There's more videos to film, Matthew. <laughs> Bye.